Hi everyone, I'm Paul Bieben and this is Yahoo News Now. So Hillary Clinton is now the presumptive Democratic nominee. She picked up four of the six state contests Tuesday, including California. And with that, she picked up a big endorsement from a California business leader and environmental activist, Tom Steyer. He tweeted this, today I am endorsing Hillary Clinton for president. Now is the time for us to unite and defeat Trump. Hashtag I'm with her. Tom Steyer joins me now from the campus of Stanford University. This is his first interview since making that announcement. He is the founder of Next Gen Climate, an environmental advocacy organization. And Tom, it's great to have you today. Paul, thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Great. So, Tom, you held a fundraiser for Secretary Clinton last May. You were an early backer of her back in 2008, but you waited this time around until she was officially the presumptive nominee to endorse her. Why, why the delay? Well, we really wanted to play a very specific role in this campaign, which was to make sure that climate and energy were a central part of the conversation. So what we did was to try and challenge every single candidate of both parties to come out with their solutions to the climate crisis. And so as a result, what we really wanted to do was to engage voters on this issue, make them informed, and let them make the decision through the primary season. Okay, so, so back in January, you said that Secretary Clinton's position on climate change wasn't fully fleshed out at that point. Has she moved that ball forward? Has anything changed? Oh, she absolutely has. I mean, we were saying then, when, and when I was asked, that basically the primary season is a chance for people to refine their positions, to compete for voters, to try and express better their ideas. And that happened for all the Democratic candidates, really. They really got a chance to compete to explain to voters why their solutions on energy and climate were going to be best for the country. Now, but climate, I mean, Bernie Sanders made climate change a part of his stump speech, environmental justice. He said it time and time again, I mean, practically every time he was out in public. Secretary Clinton is, has not made it that, at least not as, as, as integral to her campaign. Are you trying to push her more in that direction? Well, I think if you go back and see, they competed at a lot of the debates even when the moderators weren't asking the question, to explain why their energy positions, why their answers on climate were better than each other. So we are going to continue through the general election to try and make sure that voters understand where the candidates uh, stand on energy and climate, to make sure that it's an important part of every conversation, so that when the time, being, time comes and we have a new president, it's clear to, to her that, uh, this is something that's absolutely on the voters' mind and on Americans' minds. Mm -hmm. Do you think that conversation, and especially the fact that Sanders Sanders really did make it part of his stump speech, do you do you think that helped push her in the direction more so than it would have been if it, if she had he had not been in the race? I think the fact that what has got every candidate involved is really the voters. I mean, what we've seen is a huge move for Democrats. This is a top three issue. I think something like 72 percent of Democrats say they want the, their candidate to be good on this issue, and it really makes a difference to, as to how they'll vote. So I think really what the candidates respond to is Americans and the people whose votes they think they can get and that they want to get. So I don't think it's really um, a reaction. I don't think they're reacting so much to each other as reacting to what the people who are going to go to the polls say they want and, in fact, do want. Mm -hmm. Did you talk to either the Sanders or the Clinton camp before you made your announcement today? No. You know, we are, we are really trying to represent this issue in the campaign, and so we're trying to do it in an independent fashion. And I think it's clear at this point there is just a dramatic choice between these two, the two presumptive candidates, and we think it's really important that people rally around Secretary Clinton. You know, another big issue, of course, uh, really on both sides, is, is the question of big money in politics. Um, you know, you're one of the biggest players on the Democratic side when it comes to big money. Are you worried that some of that appearance may turn off some of the Sanders voters that the Clinton campaign is really going to be trying to pull in now? Well, we've always been opponents of the Citizens United decision. What we think our role is, is to try and empower voter to voter contact to ensure that there is the broadest possible democracy that as many people in America are involved, engaged, and go to the polls, and to really give other people voice on the issues that we think are most important. But it, in, in terms of Citizens United, we've thought that was a historically bad decision, and you know, we're hoping it'll be overturned.
Right. Well, and speaking of broad participation, uh, young people, of course, a big part of the Sanders base in particular. And in 2014, during the midterms, you spent a lot of money trying to get young people to the polls. And it's a priority this year as well, from what I understand. But that group, as you know, does not have a great track record for turnout. What are you going to try to do to bring those voters uh, to Secretary Clinton's camp now? You know, our strategy from the very beginning has been to engage voters on issues that are really important. And that's not going to change. We are going to continue to be trying to engage voters on energy and climate, trying to engage voters on how that relates to jobs and economic justice. And that will continue. Our, we feel that the biggest thing that can happen, the best thing for America is a broader democracy for as many people, including young people, to show up at the polls and make the best possible decision for our country. And, and Secretary Clinton's opponent, of course, is Donald Trump. And your organization has put out a Spanish language ad just last month that was taking him and aim at him. You've written about how to stop Donald Trump. How, how much money are you willing to spend to defeat him? Well, we think that Donald Trump represents terrible values and actually that his policies are a direct attack on and a threat to the values that we think are the most basic American values. So we're as committed as possible to try and make sure that those policies and values and him as the proponent of that don't win. You know, we, we couldn't imagine a starker choice between candidates the one, than the one we're being presented with. I mean, talk, talk more about that, his values and policies. I mean, one thing he has not been particularly specific about are policies. I mean, he's called climate change, I think, a Chinese hoax. Um, you know, he tends to lay out these sort of emotional uh, landscape positions, if you will, but not specific on policy. What, what, what's your response to what some of what he's been saying on the trail so far? I, I agree with you. He is not a policy-driven candidate. He's an attitude-driven candidate, and his attitude is, is pretty much belligerence. What that means in terms of energy and climate is he has, abs as far as I can tell, he has shown no understanding of the topic, no awareness of what's going on, and no ability really to take the information and put it forward into a meaningful and forward-thinking policy. So from our standpoint, from what he said, he absolutely is looking back. He's trying to reenact the energy policies of the 1950s, and it'd be a disaster for the country and the world. So we're absolutely opposed to Mr. Trump. I mean, is, is there a dollar figure, though, on how you counter this? I mean, he has, he's gotten billions in free media, for example. Uh, how do you, as someone who's you know, engaged in a media campaign against him, how do you put a number on that? I don't think that's the way to think about it. I think the right way to think about Mr. Trump is in terms of what you can believe and what we have to know. And what we know is what's go we can see what's going on in the world and we can look forward and see the best way to handle that. In terms of energy and climate, there are straightforward clean energy policies that will create a lot of jobs and make us a lot healthier. We know that he has never embraced any part of that and that everything he says is opposed to it. So from our standpoint, how much are we opposed to him? We are completely and unalterably opposed to him. We think he's a disaster for the American people. And finally, you know, a lot of people want to know, do you have political aspirations of your own? Are you considering a run for governor for California, maybe come 2018? What I have said and what, and what is entirely true is we are totally committed through Election Day, November 8, 2016. When we see what happens, when I see what happens, then I'll try and figure out what I can do to have the most impact on the issues that I am passionate about, that I think are so important for America. And I'll try and figure out, not in terms of what's best for me, but how I can have the impact to make sure that we go forward in a way that I believe is in the interest of Americans and I believe that other Americans overwhelmingly agree with. And I'll just want to be one of the people in the army moving forward. And how that exactly plays out, I honestly don't know. Well, Tom, we'll check in with you uh, either before November 8th or soon after. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for being with us today. Appreciate it. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for having me. And we always look forward to hearing what you have to say. You can follow Yahoo News and me, Paul Beban, on Twitter and use hashtag Yahoo Now to let us know what you think about everything you just heard or whatever else is on your mind. Thanks for watching, and we'll, we'll see you soon.